so um, I'll fess up and say I wrote it down because um, what I want to talk about is, is a little bit of a hard subject for me and I didn't want to get all emotional about it. So. Um, and this is my last official Wednesday here in Wichita. I get to go pick up keys to my apartment in Oklahoma City on Friday, so I'm very excited about that. But I have a place in both cities, at least for this month, so I will be back and back throughout the year, not leaving, you know, for good. Um, and before I start to share with you what I wrote down, I want to say thank you to the group, um, Shannon West especially, for creating it. Um, I think it's really cool how uh, individuals from different teams that don't financially benefit from one another uh, can come together in encouragement and support and love to grow Christ. So I think that's awesome. Amen. <clears throat> okay. I want to share a scripture from Jeremiah 31. I got this this morning when I woke up. I think that's really cool because I've been asking, okay, God, what am I supposed to talk about? Um, and when I woke up, there was a phrase in my head from this. So, Jeremiah 31, 3 and 4. The Lord appeared to us in the past, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with loving kindness. I will build you up again, and you will be rebuilt, O virgin Israel. Again, you will take up your tambourines and go out to dance with the joyful. I believe God has a special purpose inside each one of us. We are all unique and wonderful and called to something greater than our The question is, are we going to listen for and step into his dream for us? At five years old, my friend Joshua Williams, who lives in Miami, Florida, he's now 12, he knew that his purpose in life was to feed the hungry. And so, um, with the help of his mother, he created Joshua's Heart Foundation five years ago. And most of us, we go through our entire life and we never really do figure out what our purpose is, but he knew at age five, I think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, um, being who we are called to be is not easy, but we've got to do it anyway. I hear God telling me that he has made me to be a fearless encourager and to use my voice and my actions to inspire others. Trying to be that positive person while surrounded by negativity and criticism. Well, it just doesn't work. Some of you know what I'm talking about. There's not room for both fear and faith to coexist in the same space. I choose faith and hope and promise and a life of giving. I have uh, had to deal with some feelings of rejection and loss for the last five months following a separation from my husband after over 20 years together. I've experienced feelings of grief, grief for the loss of a relationship that was real, and grief over the, the death of a dream that I had to be married forever. And it has been hard on our daughters too. Ever since I was young, I have tried to fill a void in myself with another person's approval, or success, or by escaping, like watching a movie or food. But um, the truth is that no thing, no person can possibly fill the void, that void except for God and the knowing in your spirit that you are loved. You don't have to earn it. It isn't conditional. It just is. I pray for peace and joy for my kids and my husband. And I'm grateful for them, and I trust God will work all things out in his time and according to his purpose. And those feelings of rejection that creep in as we deal with other people, or we think um, too much on our circumstances, those feelings of condemnation or rejection, they are not from God. I woke up this morning, like I told you, with this very clear thought that God was saying, I love you with an everlasting love. He holds each one of us by his right hand. I love that it says that in the Bible over and over again. He lifts us up out of the muck and the mire and he places us on a rock. He created us to do good works, which he has prepared in advance for us to do. Life is too short to be anything but happy and to help others. I think it is so cool how God connects people. I didn't know Joshua's mom until I saw an article about him in a parade magazine as part of our newspaper. 
about six months ago. So I reached out to her and the exact same day she called me back. So now for the next four and a half months, I'm going to be training to run a half marathon in Moab, Utah. And I'm going to be raising money to help Joshua feed families in need with each step. Another friend of mine, of, of many that God has put into my path, is Pastor Julio Vega out of Tulsa. I met this uh, mighty man of God. He was just a, a Wendy's manager at the time, where he was teaching his employees to be kind to their customers. Um, Julio's recent Facebook post says, We don't have to allow condemnation to rule our lives. Jesus died so that we would not have to live in condemnation. Satan is the source of all condemnation. If we allow him to make us to feel condemned, he will also be able to stop us from receiving all that God has for us. He will play on our emotions, making us feel as though God has stopped loving us. However, whenever we feel God doesn't love us, we can decide to believe the word despite our feelings. His word is our final authority, and his word says that he loves us. My sister in Christ and fellow Viper promoter Donna Powell from Dallas, she gave me a pamphlet. Um, God connected us at an event in a former business that I was in when I met Shannon and LaDonna. And uh, part of the, the pamphlet says, it's a, like a letter from God to you as his child. My plan for your future has always been filled with hope because I love you with an everlasting love. My thoughts toward you are countless as the sand on the seashore, and I rejoice over you with singing. I will never stop doing good to you, for you are my treasured possession. I desire to establish you with all of my heart and with all of my soul, and I want to show you great and marvelous things. If you seek me with all of your heart, you will find me. Delight in me, and I will give you the desires of your heart, for it is I who gave you those desires. I am able to do far more than you could possibly imagine, for I am your greatest encourager. I am also the Father who comforts you in all of your troubles. When you are brokenhearted, I am close to you. As a shepherd carries a lamb, I have carried you close to my heart. One day I will wipe away every tear from your eyes, and I will take away every pain that you have suffered here on this earth. I am your Father, and I love you even as I love my Son. So lift up your eyes. Know that you are loved, know that life is good, and that he is working all things together for his purpose and for yours. Amen.